Okay, this video is on kinetic friction. We had a couple videos in the past that talked about uh, how friction in general is the force that keeps one object from sliding across the other force. This, specifically with kinetic friction, we're assuming that the object is moving across the surface of the other thing. So let's say the object's moving this way. Kinetic friction is always going to try and stop or resist that motion. So again, if you imagine this surface is bumpy and this surface is bumpy, when the two are dragged across each other, there's a force that tries to stop the object. That uh, force is always going to be um, parallel to the plane and opposite current velocity. That's worth writing out because it's important. Um, you're going to find in the odd questions, doesn't come up very often, but it does come up from time to time, that um, it's sort of natural to assume that the force of friction is resisting the other forces acting on the object. But if the other forces are trying to cause the object to break, then the force of friction might actually be working with them. Imagine, for example, that you're talking about a car driving across, you know, whatever, uh, a road and the car decides to stop, so its braking force is causing it to stop. At the same time, the wind resistance is also uh, acting on the car. Because it's opposite current velocity, the force of friction sometimes might be working with the applied force, like in the instance I'm saying here, where the resistive force of the wind would work with the brake to make the car slow down faster, or uh, it might be working with the applied force. So the, the direction of the uh, forces acting on the object aren't helpful when trying to determine the, the direction of the force of friction. We have to know the current velocity. I'm just going to dive straight into problems here and uh, if anything else comes up. Oh, one more quick thing before I do that. The force of friction, if the object is moving, no longer has this less than or equal to business. Now we can say that it's equal to the coefficient, this time we call it UK, and we call that the coefficient of kinetic friction. Again, times our measure of how much contact there is between those two surfaces, the normal force. So remember with static we said less than or equal to because the force of friction is only as big as it needs to be to resist the applied forces but once the object is moving, you can always try and stop it. So the coefficient of kinetic friction doesn't need other forces to work with, or the force of friction in a kinetic sense doesn't need other forces to work against. It's going to go to its maximum value at all time as it tries to stop the object as quickly as possible. Okay, with that in mind, that's the other difference between this and static friction. Let's go and look at this problem. 5 kilogram block is resting on the floor. It takes a force of 30 newtons to get it moving. On the other hand, it only takes a force of 22 newtons to keep it moving at a constant velocity determine the coefficient of static and kinetic friction. So to get it moving, so we're assuming it was at rest to begin with, this is going to be our static situation. What we're saying is that it takes an applied force of 30 newtons to get it moving, so we're going to assume the force of friction that that is overcoming is less than 30 newtons. Uh, we could put in 29.9 here, but we're just going to work with a force of friction of 30 newtons and then recognize that we should be we should have something a little bit less than that. So here we have a uh, gravitational force of negative 49 newtons. And as a result, the normal force of 49 newtons. And so we can use our, our equation for um, static friction, which we'd usually say less than or equal to here, USFN. But what we're going to do this time, since we're dealing with the 
um, sort of the barrier problem where we're dealing with the critical point where it goes from being resisted to getting going is we're going to assume that the force of friction is already at the max. So we're going to go and use the equal sign. So that means my force of friction is 30 newtons. My coefficient of static friction is what I'm finding. And my normal force is 49 newtons. Dividing both sides by 49. I get a coefficient of static friction of 0 0.612. On the other hand, looking at the kinetic, the kinetic situ situation, here I only have an applied force of 22 newtons and I'm maintaining a constant velocity, it says in the problem, so I'm going to assume that my applied force and my frictional force are equal to each other. And everything that's going on in this diagram applies to this situation too, which leads me back to a normal force of 49 newtons. And so again in the kinetic situation I always I don't have the um, inequality, I always have the equals, so I can just go straight to this. 22 newtons, not knowing my coefficient of friction, 49 newtons. Dividing both sides by 49 newtons. And I get 0 0.449. So what I can see here is it takes less force to keep an object moving than it took to get it moving in the first place. My coefficient of kinetic friction is a little bit lo lower than my coefficient of static friction. I think this is fairly common, although I, th I don't know enough about individual materials to know if it ever goes the other way. I think it is more common that it's easier, or the coefficient of static friction tends to be a little bit higher than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, we have another 5 kilogram crate on the floor. A little uncreative here, sorry and um, you're applying a force to it and it's asking you to determine the acceleration of the crate if you pull with falling forces. So here I'm going to recognize that I have a force of gravity which is going to be negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times my 5 kilograms again or negative 49 newtons and that means if we assume that it's a flat ground nothing weird is going on with the normal force and it's equal to the force of gravity at 49 newtons. I have a coefficient of friction, oh, I accidentally changed closure, that's fine, of 0 0.85. So the force of friction equals coefficient times the normal force. If it doesn't say if it's the coefficient of static friction or kinetic friction, don't worry about it. Just use it for the one that you need in the problem. Sometimes uh, books will be careful or problems will be careful to make sure that they say static for static and kinetic for kinetic, but not always. And if it's not specific, it doesn't really matter. So going 0.85 times your 49 newtons is 41.65 newtons. And so I have an applied force of 50 newtons here and a force of friction resisting that motion of 41.65 newtons. I'll make that negative um, based on the fact that I'm putting it in the negative direction or the fact that it's working against the applied force. Here I'm going to have a net force fifty minus 41.65 or plus a negative if you want That works it to be 8.35 newtons. And then using Newton's second law, F net equals MA. Dividing both sides by 5 kilograms. A works out to be 1.67. So there you go, we have some applied force, 
we can get a force of friction using our normal force and with all that in mind then the applied force less the force of friction leads to a net force and an acceleration. Now this is a little bit tricky 70 newtons x 40 degrees y. What's tricky about that is essentially what you're saying is your applied force, let's go over here, here's your five kilogram object, your applied force this time is on an angle x then y 40 degrees. The problem is this force is going to try and cause the crate to accelerate. This force is actually going to lift the crate a little bit. We know what this is like if we try and drag an object up across the floor, if we lift up on it a little bit, that means that we're reducing the contact between the two objects. Our applied force can work against the force of gravity a little bit instead, and then the normal force doesn't have to work so hard to hold up that object. So this part of the force is going to um, cancel with the force of gravity and make the normal force not as big as we would have expected it to be. Before we can dive into that too clearly though, putting that force on an angle is a little bit confusing. So let's take that 70 newtons and let's divide it into two forces, an x and a y, and then with that in hand it'll be easier to put it onto our free body diagram and to consider the two parts of it that are doing slightly different things separately. This side is my adjacent side, so this is going to be 70 newtons, cos 40. Which works out to 53.6. This is my opposite side, so that's going to be 70 newtons, sine 40. works out to 45 newtons. What that means then, this five kilogram object, which was initially subject to a force of gravity of negative 49 newtons, 45 of the 49 newtons are compensated for by the applied force. This is FAY, this would be FAX, and this is FG. There still is a normal force, FN, but you can see it's going to be greatly reduced. The way you can tell, or the way you can calculate it if you want to use an equation, is you, you can say the forces, the net force, in the y direction, or the vertical direction, if you will, has to be zero, right? This object, this crate isn't going to fly off the ground, it's not going to fall through the ground, and so there should be no acceleration in the vertical direction. That's going to be your FG plus your FN plus your FAY coming together to make that happen. So zero equals negative 49 newtons plus we don't know how much is left for the normal force to balance after the 45 newtons of the vertical force. So here we can see that Fn equals four newtons. That makes sense if you imagine four plus 45 is balancing out the 49 there. So with that in hand we can now calculate our force of friction. It's going to be pretty low since our um, since our normal force got pretty low there, but let's go back to the original question and look up our coefficient of friction again, 0.85. So we get 0.85 times 4, 3.4 newtons. So that 3.4 newtons will resist that 53.6 newton applied force. And so I'll put it on as a negative. And then in the vertical direction, I've done all my sum of my forces. But now if I look in my horizontal direction, or if you want my x direction, um, the net force is not going to add to zero. It's going to add to something. And then as a result, there's going to be an acceleration. 53.6 newtons plus a negative 4 newtons leaves it at... forty nine point six newtons and that F net equals MA so A works out to nine point nine two 
meters per second squared. Which is a fairly large acceleration, which results from the fact that we pulled pretty hard on this crate. We almost lifted it right off the ground. And as a result, there was very little force of friction or very little resistance to that big pull. So there you go, there's a couple calculations of acceleration for different uh, kinetic friction situations. Uh, there'll be a couple more videos just with more examples and more talk about this in general. Um, so, but that's all for this video.